When Roy Davis and his brothers came to Jeffersonville, they caused quite a commotion. Not only was Davis at the center of criminal and civil lawsuits, he had started a public religious war against prohibition using the Louisville Courier Journal newspaper as his media platform. Those who would have loved to hate Davis for his immoral lifestyle with underage women would have hesitated to say so in a community that could have been thriving during the Great Depression. Davis alleged, at that time, that he was against prohibition. To the Branham family, having been involved with the Wathen liquor ring, this would have been a very appealing doctrinal position. For the prophet and the people of Jeffersonville, Roy Davis's highly publicized trial of sexual immorality and swindling church members was not a problem. Instead of hiding his past, Davis embraced it. He published a religious pamphlet entitled 10 Days in Federal Prison and started a revival. Davis began claiming to have been a licensed spiritualist who converted to Christianity and was about to expose the increasingly popular world of spiritualism. He did very well at presenting himself as a victim. So well, in fact, that he attracted former Jeffersonville Mayor Thomas B. Rader's son, Ralph Rader, to join him in hosting the revival. As a martyr, Davis was able to attract large crowds. The city of Jeffersonville quickly turned into a Pentecostal revival, and Davis transitioned from spiritualist to divine healer. This was confusing for me since the prophet claimed to have never heard of Pentecostalism before a trip to Mishawaka, Indiana years later. Having joined forces with Davis, not only was he the prophet in a Pentecostal church based on divine healing, he was working with Davis as a minister helping to teach it, while Roy Davis continued to be a familiar face in the court system. 